Welcome to CNET Top 5, where each time we meet, we count down another hot CNET list. I'm Tom Merritt. At the end of the year, you review the best and you review the worst. And we're not just talking about gadgets today. I present my Top 5 Worst Tech of 2007. At number 5, Windows Vista. It's not without hope of redemption, folks, but when manufacturers are demanding to sell Windows XP, you know Vista's kind of a flop. Just wait a service pack or two, though. It'll get better. Coming in at number four, Apple TV. Breaks my ever-loving heart, but it just didn't catch on or really end up being useful. I mean, if you want to watch video streamed from iTunes to the TV, it's great. Turns out people want more than that. Up to number three, HD DVD and Blu-ray. Great technologies on their own, but the battle pretty much makes them useless for now. Price cuts, you are our only hope. Sliding in at number two, municipal Wi-Fi. The dream of free public wireless was dashed by bankruptcies, rollbacks, and just plain being hard to install. We must look to another wireless protocol to serve us here, I fear. WiMAX. Before we get to number one, let's check in on the worst tech of all time, as determined by CNET UK. Crazy Brits, I love those guys. All right, let's get to our number one. The worst tech of 2007, and it's a product. At number one, it's the Kobe MP C7092. So bad, Jasmine Francis product summary reads, the good, cute design. The bad, everything else. The bottom line, don't bother. But when you turn it on, you'll be greeted with one of the most horrible players I've ever come across. So bad that Donald Bell said he could make a better player with his own bare hands. He tried, and it tied in our prize fight. So bad, it's number one. Well, that's it for this edition of CNET Top 5. Look for our list of the top 10 best products of 2007 elsewhere on CNET TV. I'm Tom Merritt. See you next time. I'm Dan Ackerman, and we are here taking a look at Apple's ubiquitous MacBook. This 13-inch laptop is probably the most popular laptop on the planet right now, and Apple really hasn't given it a major upgrade in the last year and a half or so, but they do incremental upgrades every couple of months. Uh, now it has a slightly faster CPU, and it ships with Leopard, the latest version of OS X Mac's also popular operating system. Now looks wise, the MacBook looks pretty much the same. They've remapped a couple of the function keys. Otherwise, it's the same MacBook you know and love. However, Leopard has all kinds of cool stuff in it that we should really take a peek at. They've got Time Machine, which is a really easy to use backup program. You've got Spaces, which lets you set up multiple desktops, and then you can just switch between them on the fly. You can put all your music apps on one, you can put all your media apps on another, you can put your work documents on another. And you've got Quick Look, which is one of the handiest new things. All you do is go to a document, highlight it, hit the space bar, and you get a cool preview version of it. You don't need to open up the full document. And, of course, you get the front row remote. The MacBook is still black. The front row remote is still white. But that's okay, because you just hit the button and you call up front row Apple's media management app. And, of course, unchanged because it's pretty near perfect. The best thing about the MacBook, now, I'm kind of a clumsy guy. I'm always walking through the living room, tripping over the power cord. Magnetic power cord pops right out, keeps my investment safe. I don't know why everyone doesn't do this. Michael Dell, when you figure this out, give me a call. I'm Dan Ackerman, and that is the Apple MacBook.